The Lawrence County Community Y Salute to Courage program is proud to honor Fred Rents. What is courage? You can look at it in, in many different ways. Mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. As the boys were storming the beach in Normandy, Fred was giving them cover. When I think of Fred, I think of a selfless mentor, a selfless uh, community servant. Fred is someone that I would call a role model. Courage, in my view, is uh, being willing and determined to do the right thing no matter who it upsets. You know, there are three kinds of, of leaders. Uh, those who make things happen, those who wish for things to happen, and those who wonder what happened. I think every city needs a Fred Rents. Fred is a person who makes things happen, To go back about 20 years before my first wife died, she was in St. Francis Hospital, and Dr. Kim was a neurologist who I, his offices were here in this hospital. He would take me while I was down there visiting her and run neurology tests on uh, my legs primarily, and found that I had purple neuropathy, which is a, a disease of the, of, the, of the nerves, which they really don't have a cure for. My mother had told me, uh, in polite society, you never speak about religion or politics. And I, I think that Trying to describe my life with all reverence to God is like trying to describe an automobile without describing the engine. Because it's, it's God, the engine, who makes my life work. I think Fred Rents meets and exceeds the definition of both humanity and courage. Fred's great-grandfather, John Rents, came to the U.S. from Bremen, Germany in the mid-1800s. He and his wife lived on a farm in the Croton area of Newcastle. Fred Rents was born in 1924 and raised alongside his elder brother Dick, eight years his senior. After graduating from Newcastle High School, Fred enrolled in Oberlin College to become an attorney, but after just one semester, he left to answer his country's call. At just 18 years of age, like many of his time, Fred joined the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II. He trained to fly the B-24 Liberator bomber. With each mission, his life was on the line, constantly facing deadly anti-aircraft fire. They all had flak jackets. Everyone had a jacket that they used. And the, anyone who had a seat, pilot, co-pilot, bombardier, all took the flak jackets off and sat on them because all the flak came from the ground up, and they were most concerned about what was happening to, the lower, to their lower extremities. Fred flew and completed 30 missions, including one of the most important battles in U.S. history, D-Day, the invasion of Normandy. You look at that generation of the World War II, you know, the greatest generation, for damn sure they were and are the greatest generation. I can obviously tell you, my father, a World War II veteran in Okinawa, is the one man I respect the most in this world. Number two is Fred Rents. I had a number of blessings in my life. One of which, the first thing I think of, is the fact that I did not receive a Purple Heart, which would have meant I was wounded. And it's a blessing I was not wounded during my 30 missions. For his service, he received the Distinguished Flying Cross, four air medals, and the European Theater Ribbon. On June 25, 1944, after completing his tour of duty at the ripe old age of 20, 
he returned home and married his childhood sweetheart, Suzanne Shannon. The wedding was held in her parents' living room. Together they had two children, Bruce and Nancy. Bruce and his wife Sue have two children, Emily and Matthew. Nancy married Charles Blakely and had two children, Caroline and Anne. Anne was not expected to live more than a year. She was born with a physical condition that prevented her from eating anything by mouth. Fred's special blessing, Anne, died at the age of 23. According to Fred's biography, the Rents family probably would never have become involved with the Newcastle News if not for... sauerkraut. George Treadwell, a local attorney, was owner of the Newcastle News. It seems that an editor on his staff loved sauerkraut. He went to the Rents farm and asked Fred's great-grandmother if she would sell him some. She agreed, then asked if he could find a job for her little Freddie. With that, Fred's grandfather began the Rents family tradition at the Newcastle News. Interestingly, George Treadwell's granddaughter, Louise, married actor Spencer Tracy after meeting him in New York City. Fred furthered his education, receiving a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Carnegie Tech, today known as Carnegie Mellon. He and Suzanne moved to California, where he earned a master's degree in electrical engineering from Caltech. He worked for North American Aviation for about five years. In the summer of 1954, during a visit to California, Fred Sr. suffered a heart attack and tragically died in Fred's arms. Dick then asked Fred to move back home to help run the Newcastle News. And he, Mr. Fred had to give up his career and he um, oversaw basically the operations of the news. He was more into the financial end of it. In 1954, he took over the production of the Newcastle News with his brother. Fred and Dick, they were so totally different. Fred has always been very independent. Fred was the student. My father was not. He was the socialite. Well, Fred and Dick both wanted to be called by their first names. They preferred not to be called Mr. Even though they were the, they ran the organization, they were in charge, uh, they wanted to treat everybody fairly, you know, in like a, on an equal basis. His demeanor made me feel, as a worker, as a journalist, very appreciated. He knew everybody who worked for him. At that time, probably 100 people were better. And he knew everyone's first name, last name. He knew your wife. He knew your children. Well, I think they created a company loyalty here. And that's the reason why we have so many people on our staff who have been there for so many years. Seen by news employees as a caring man, not just an employer, Fred remained there until his retirement in 1988 when the paper was sold. On Christmas night, 1988, Suzanne suffered a stroke. She didn't speak for 18 months. And after Fred and I were married, I met one of the nurses that he had taking care of her. And that nurse said, and Susie couldn't speak, that nurse said to me, I learned more from Susie Rents than any person I've ever known. So that speaks to the kind of lady she was. And as, as the Lord wished it, he met another gal, a wonderful gal named Barbara. He met Barb while serving on the board of the Human Services Center. And I've told Fred this many times, he owes us because of Barbara. He owes us big time. Fred and Barb were married April 18, 1992, in a quiet ceremony in Lancaster County. The presiding minister, Fred's daughter, Nancy. He and his brother, Dick, that was their lifetime hobby of restoring antique cars or getting a, a neat, unique car. He was diagnosed in 1992 with peripheral neuropathy, an incurable debilitating neuromuscular disease which over the years has robbed his ability to perform the routine tasks that most of us take for granted. 